Welcome to Comics Expertise. Today I will be summarizing and giving my thoughts on X Force number five, written by Benjamin Percy and illustrated by Joshua Cassara. So, this comic opens right where the last issue left off. Wolverine, having only been part way through the Kragoan Gate as it was destroyed, has been cut in half, and Quentin Quire has been decapitated. The soldiers who attacked Xavier's research facility leaves Wolverine's torso for dead because apparently Wolverine's not famous among these types of people. Domino radios Wolverine as Wolverine tells her to hurry. Having no gate to make her way to Wolverine in a timely fashion, Sage calls in Gateway, who is, as usual, enjoying quiet meditation until Black Tom Cassidy interrupts and informs Gateway that he is needed. We then get a white page titled The Uncertainty of Black Tom Cassidy explaining how his powers interact with Krakow and sometimes do strange things, like making him wake up in weird places or erect a 50-foot-tall statue of Juggernaut in his sleep after dreaming about him, which is awesome. I like to think that because Juggernaut and Black Tom are friends, that Black Tom just woke up, saw the statue he made, and just said, screw it, it stays. I would have paid twice as much for this issue just to see Xavier and some bystanders react to that statue. Anyway... Domino and Forge gather up Wolverine's lower half along with a mech suit for Forge and get underway. Meanwhile, the soldiers at the research facility are gunning down all the staff and start collecting Krakoan tech they can get their hands on as one soldier nervously tells another that the mutant's response was too quick and that they need to hurry before more show up. The senior soldier tells the nervous soldier to quit being scared just in time for quarter pint Wolverine to stab him in the chest from behind. He straight up murdered this dude. Now, I give Wolverine a lot of grief, being the Cyclops fan that I am, but damn. Nervous dude tells Wolverine, no, you're supposed to be dead. And quarter pint Wolverine's response is, you first. He says this with a smile on his face and his claws buried in this dude's back. But he's not done. Somehow, someway, Wolverine's such a beast that he launches himself off the ground at the nervous soldier with no legs. Sadly, that's where Wolverine, being a beast, stops, because he's met midair by the soldier's little friends as they just unload on him, trying to make sure he's actually dead this time. This shot of Wolverine with chunks blown out of him lying on the ground is beautiful. But anyway... Just as the soldiers thinks Wolverine's gotta be dead, Domino, Forge, and Gateway arrive on the scene. Domino saying, You can kill us over and over until the end of time, but we'll keep coming back to kill you more. And for anyone who thinks I glossed over Wolverine killing somebody, we get Beast and Sage overseeing the mission with Beast saying, While they can kill on official X-Force missions, they still need someone left alive to interrogate. So Forge goes to make Wolverine back into a half-pint man since he's a quarter-pint at the moment. While Domino, not trying to take any prisoners, she catches one dude and uses the shape-shifting weapon Forge gave her to squeeze his neck till it snaps, saying as she does so, You treated me like meat. As she comes across another soldier attempting to retreat, she corners the soldier, telling the soldier, Before you die, I want you to look at my face. I want you to see the hurt in it. I want you to swallow my pain. And that soldier swallows all right. She swallows flames as Domino cremates her on the spot. Domino comes to the nervous soldier who's the last man standing and he's a wreck. He's begging for his life saying he's not one of the lab grown dudes that captured Domino. His name's Bill. He has a rescue dog waiting for him at home. He loves westerns. He's pouring his heart out emphasizing that he's a real person. He swears up and down he doesn't know what happened to Domino and he had nothing to do with it. And I gotta say, after his speech, I had to remind myself this dude was gunning innocent people down at this research facility not five minutes ago. Anyway, the scene cuts away as we see Domino and Wolverine drink some whiskey and she asks about Quentin. Wolverine responds, he's baking in the oven right now and says they should enjoy the quiet while they can. And that last soldier... He's being tortured by Beast and Jean Grey for information. And I don't want to exaggerate or downplay this part because all we really see is Beast slap the guy up. But while he does that, Jean gets info from his mind. But I just want to say, I need to see the conversation between Beast and Cyclops where Beast apologized 
to Cyclops for giving him such crap about his X-Force. Anyway, Beast thinks their captive attacked because of political reasons, but he revealed he and his people simply attacked the mutants because they're on top of the world financially speaking, and that made them a target. Gene digs into this dude's head to reveal that he was hired by the man with the peacock tattoo. And the last page of this comic is a white page detailing the de-escalation of violence in combat zones all over the world. And while some see this as good, others see it as militaries preparing for an upcoming conflict. Alright, so now for some of my thoughts. This comic was the best X-Book this week. Both Benjamin Percy's and Joshua Kassara's expertise is on full display. The action was great. There was sadness that you felt for Domino after her ordeal of being captured and tortured and seeing how savage she treated the enemies in this issue from thinking that they were responsible to the look on her face as she let that last soldier live. There was well-balanced humor from Forge at Wolverine's expense and from the nervous soldier at the end being interrogated and worrying about his rescue dog. Now a small nitpick I have that will be a huge issue for some other people. I have not seen Beast grow organically from his pacifist days giving Cyclops flack over X-Force to now not only running X-Force, but participating in torture. Gene as well for that matter. The transition could have been more nuanced, but I feel like we are missing scenes where we should have seen Beast come to terms with Cyclops' way of thinking. But I'm willing to just look past this small problem I have and suspend my disbelief to enjoy a comic that was action-packed, humorous, and emotional. It was pretty damn good. And that's the end of the video. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me some comments. I'd appreciate it.